everyone, it's me, Darlene. I am back with episode two, hopefully the final episode, of my Batik Steps quilt. If you're not familiar with this series, I'll have episode number one in the description box. Go watch it, get caught up, come back. When I left you the last time, I had put together some of my pieces, and now I finished putting all my squares together. Well, except for the ones that don't have a mate. So I have four singles of the batik. I have four strips of two, four strips of three, and 16 strips of four. And then for the muslin, I have uh, four singles. And what is it? 19 strips of two. Now I'm just ready to start putting this together. This is when this printout comes in handy. You can print this. It's on my blog. I'll have the link down below, down there somewhere. And we're just going to follow it. So each square tells you, like right here, there's four darker squares. Those are the batik. You need a strip of four, and then you need a strip of two of the muslin, and then a strip of four of the batik. The single muslin, four batik, double muslin, and three batik. And we're just going to build that way. Now, I'm not going to be fussy, but I do want to end, I don't know, I think no matter what, it'll be okay. So I'm just going to start putting together a few rows, and I'll show you. I'm loving this so far. My only thing is, I don't have enough room to build this whole thing, and I don't want to be left at the end with an impossible way, you know, to finish. I don't care if, like, these kind of blocks would even be on top of itself. I can always turn, but I don't want one of these yellow ones, because that's just bright. I like those to be scattered about. So, I'm going to um, find another place in my house <laughs> to build the rest of the rows. I want to leave this here so I can slap it together good. Let me go build my other rows somewhere else and then I'll explain to you how I'm going to be putting this together. I just don't want to find another place to do this. I'm going to take my chances. I have five rows here. I really think that it'll just work out. And if it doesn't, I can always take apart a couple of blocks and swap them. I'd much rather do that, which takes minutes, than, you know, try to break my brain figuring this out. So putting this together is very easy. I'm just going to do a row at a time. So whatever way works best for you, I have this here. This is a, a strip of four, and this is being connected to it. So I can just do this and put that at the machine and then I can pick that one up and attach it. So let me just sew a couple of rows and I'll show you. This is going good, very quick and easy. Absolutely, you wanna make this by building your strips first instead of just joining each individual square. That would just be so time consuming and not necessary. I tried doing some chain piecing by working on like two rows at a time. No, that got confusing. So I'm just connecting one row at a time. And now what I'm going to do is I have my fifth row here, but I need to make room on the table. So I'm going to sew these four rows together. I'm going to mark my top left corner so I remember how this goes. <laughs> and then I will move this row up and then I can start working on, you know, the stuff that goes below here. So let me sew these four rows together. And, oh, and in case you haven't noticed, there's a shitload of intersections in this quilt. It's all intersections, but we're not going to worry about that. You can't have perfect intersections unless you have perfect squares, perfect seam allowances, perfect uh, placement, and we just can't do that. It's not realistic. So I just don't worry about it. Just put them together and be happy with however it turns out. Oh my goodness. That was easy. But I was having trouble with my machine and thread and stuff like that. My machine has been broken forever and I really need to bring it in. Now I'm looking at this. I thought I purposely switched something so I didn't have these two kitty corner. But they are. I mean, that's okay. I don't care. Oh, I've got that happening there too. 
I wonder if I like just like completely no I couldn't have because my steps are in the right direction okay I'm not going to freak about it here's the deal my intersections uh, are a hot mess a couple of them are so far apart I was like how is this even possible it's like it's in another state but my rows came out the same exact length every one of them so go figure I didn't have to do any trimming I'm not concerned about the intersections. You know why? This is like so busy that it all works. It really does. It's just funny how I have so many of the same print kitty corner that I, I wasn't seeing that before. It's just weird. All right, so obviously I have these four. I'm going to mark a corner and uh, let me do that right now. I just put a pin in the top left and I'm just going to go move this now I'm moving this guy up and I can start building down just like before. All right, I have these rows set up. When you do that, you know, this row up here is, is already put together so it looks much shorter than my other rows. Just remember, when you have all your seam allowances in there, it'll all be the same. I know because I tried, the pieces that I have left over to make the last four rows the yellows, no matter what I do, they're going to be kitty corner. And I'm okay with that because I'm going to just pick some stitches and turn something. Again, I don't mind about these other ones because they just blend. But the yellows, they pop and I don't want them like right, obviously, on top of each other um, or kitty corner. So I'm going to actually stop here for the night for me and I'll get back to this uh, tomorrow. I might do some more sewing tonight, but I'll record again tomorrow. So I'll see you in a split second. I am back. It is the next day, and I'm going to be able to finish this, like in the matter of maybe 10 minutes. I have all my big pieces put together. This is the bottom, and I have this middle part and the top. So I'm just going to be um, sewing those three sections together, hopefully in the correct order. My pins are going to help me to do that, and uh, I'm going to be done. We'll be uh, seeing it on the bed. I'm not putting a border on it. I'm just going to have it on eBay like this. So the link will be down below to this. It'll start at a penny. Free shipping for USA. Outside the USA, you can bid, but you need to pay the shipping through eBay's global shipping program. And please, there's a way on eBay that you can look that up and see what the estimated shipping cost will be for you. Don't just bid and win and then be shocked by the outrageous uh, charges for shipping outside the USA. I wanted to mention that if you wanted, you could totally do these in a diagonal too. I don't know if it would work with the exact quilt kit of pre-cuts that I made up, but you can, um, if you're doing your own, like you could have blue, 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 red, red, red. You could make everything go on the diagonal. I actually did a quilt like that, but I think it was with strip sets and not five inch squares. I, I don't even remember when I made it. But I know I have it. So I'll link down below to that one so you can at least see what it looks like. I did not want that because I wanted the muslin to be like the steps. And I wanted this to kind of just be all blended. And that's why I did it the way I did. I'm very happy with this project. Oh yeah. So when I got down to the last couple of rows, yes, I had some pieces that no matter what I did, this yellow was either going to be one on top of the other or if I turned it either way it was going to be on the diagonal I mean the you know kitty corner so I took um, three strips and I just picked out I mean it takes literally I don't know 15 seconds when you're sewing your squares together don't back stitch at the beginning and the end because then if you have to pick something out it's you know it's harder you got to go through all those stitches Save yourself a lot of time. Just slap things together. At the end, you may have a couple of strips that don't quite work, and you can just swap them out. At one point, I took them apart, a four patch apart in the center, and I swapped it out for one of the two patches that I had. So 
It all worked. I love it. All right, let me put these together and I'll show you. It's done. Before I forget, I will let you know, it's about 47 wide by 60 long. Depending where you measure it, you know, it's not perfect, but I really was surprised at how my rows came out almost exact the whole way through. The intersections are a hot mess, but the rows, I think it was only three rows that I had to trim maybe an eighth of an inch or less. Other than that, they all matched up. But yeah, I really do have some, you know, sad intersections. But it's steps, and it works for me. I like it. So let's go put it on the bed. I absolutely love the way this came out. I really do. To me, it looks like fire or something. And I love that, you know, that the batiks are not also where's my hand, you know, going down in the steps, like all the same colors in a row. I love that it's mixed up like that. And you can see that I didn't get any yellows directly touching each other or kitty corner. Oh, I'm just so happy with it. I do want to say lots of intersections. I would guess that more than half of them are not matching. Gee. I don't know, I'd be lucky if 10 actually matched. I didn't really study it. And lots of flipped seams on the back, I'm sure. I didn't really pay attention to that. You add some batting and a backing and nobody knows there's flipped seams back there. I wanted to mention anybody who wins this on eBay or if you bought one of my kits, I have that muslin on sale in my eBay store. It is the unbleached muslin and it's by the yard in case you want to use it for backing or to make a border. It would match exactly. I should have enough of that in stock. If not, I can order another bolt and uh, I'll get some in there. I want to keep that in stock on a regular basis if I can still get it. I guess that's about all I wanted to tell you about this baby. It is just beautiful. I love it. Just think of different color combinations. Every time I come up with a quilt idea like this, it's like, oh my God, I want to make 10 more with different fabrics, but I just don't have time to do that. And, you know, I end up moving on to the next thing. And there will be a next thing next Saturday night. I'm trying to do this weekly on Saturday nights. If you are watching in the future, that might have changed, but I'm going to take some pictures and show it to you and I'll show you up close. I'll show you some of the back of it. And I guess that is it for now. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe. Bye.